This program is intended for mature audiences only. Parental discretion is advised. The opinions shared on this program may not necessarily reflect the views of the program, the host, or any of our advertisers or affiliates. I grew up in the Caribbean. My dad's from Trinidad. My mom's from St. Lucia. My father was a minister. I grew up in the church. We were under that scrutiny as the pastor's kid. You were supposed to be perfect. You're talking about two girls growing up in the islands and all of a sudden, bam, you're in America. Questions that I had about men and about myself and all of these emotions and feelings that I had conflicted with what I was learning about God in the church. And that conflict happens in life and love and relationships. I am a mother. I raised three boys. But most of all, I am a woman who whose heart has been broken, who has gone through divorce, who knows what it feels like to lose somebody, and who knows what it feels like to desire somebody in your life that gets you and you get them. I know that being authentic and being real in this world opens you up to a lot of criticism, a lot of judgment, but I'm hoping that the show will be so authentic and so real that it really will touch people who are kind of living in the dark. There's no balance. And welcome to another episode of Balance with Diana J. I love today's episode. My guest is going to be speaking to us about the challenges of dating in our 40s, in our 50s, and in our 60s. What are we doing wrong and what do we need to do right? So I want you to sit back, I want you to relax, and I want you to enjoy another episode of Balance with Diana J. This episode is exclusively sponsored by The Estates Home Sales and Rentals and MrRelationshipMan.com. Michael and Connie Smith are global speakers, global ministers, and book authors. Their interpretation of God and our sexuality is revolutionary. Order your copy of The Proper Way to Eat a Peach today at www.znppublishing.com slash peach. Hello, Blair. How are you doing today? Doing excellent. How about yourself? I am doing wonderful. And I am so happy that you joined us today because I'm telling you, I have some questions for you, Blair. (laughs) And I know you're going to be able to answer them for me. But before we get started, what I would like you to do is tell our audience a little bit about yourself and what you do. Sure. Um, Well, just to make it very simple, I am a relationship and dating coach. I've been doing this for about seven years. I have uh, currently three books out. Uh, You can go to my webpage, uh, BlairNashSpeaks.com, and um, just hear, you know, find out a little bit about them. Um, I also, as I mentioned, I'm a matchmaker. And uh, I've been doing that for about two years. And most importantly, I'm a dating coach. And I've been doing that for about three and a half years and have been very successful with it. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, Blair, let me tell you why I brought you on here today. (laughs) All right. Let me tell you, Blair, we have a problem when it comes to dating particularly I'm finding in our community and even within our age group. And when I say age group, I'm in my fifties, but let's say forties and up. It's Mm -hmm. like we forgot the art of dating each other, a man and a woman. (laughs) So have you noticed that is my first question to you. And if you have noticed Mm -hmm. what I've noticed, what do you think is the real problem that we're having with being able just to date each other as adults. Absolutely. Well, first of all, uh, let me thank you for uh, just say thank you for having me on as a guest. I greatly appreciate it. Sure. Just said looks great. Everything looks wonderful. Oh, thank um, you. <laughs> yeah. What I would say is, yes, I definitely notice it is something that we, you know, I talk about amongst 
uh, kind of colleagues and, you know, friends of mine all the time about kind of how, how dating is right now in 2021 in the past, I'd say 10 to 15 years, so to speak. Uh, I think part of it is the advent of social media. It's really made it so that the whole dating component, as far as, you know, I meet you out, you know, somewhere, I ask you for your number, I come to pick you up, I bring you flout, you know, guys are like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, go right past all that. And I'm just going to inbox her. And, and typically, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll give you a cheat code. I'm sure most people know this, you know, inbox numerous people. So you yeah. might say, Hey, how you doing? You look good today. Then you see me, Hey, how you doing? You look, and you throw that out to a number of different women, right? Well, if anyone knows anything about sales, it's a numbers game, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. essentially what you're doing is saying, I'm going to put my, you know, my, my, my thing out there for as, for, for, you know, as many people as, as many women as I'm interested in. And if you know the numbers game, then you know that if I, if I DM eight women, three of them are going to respond, hopefully. And then one of them might be the kind of woman that you want to take out. Right. And so that's kind of how men operate in the, in the atmosphere of going at, you know, talking to different women. So you kind of get past this whole idea of having to spend all this time on the phone and, you know, doing all this, you know, walking her on the, you know, walking her downtown and getting one, you kind of move right past that and just say, you know what, I'm going to make this easy on myself. And so what's happened is, as you mentioned, you know, you, you see the frustration from a lot of women because they're like, I want to be courted. I feel like I should be courted. I want someone to come and pick me up and tell me I look beautiful and all this other stuff. And that's missing from dating right now. And it is a challenge. It definitely is. So that makes a lot of sense to me because I think what you're saying is basically uh, the world of technology and social media have changed the dynamics when it comes to dating each other, especially now that we have so many dating platforms. It right. really has changed the dynamics from maybe when you and I were younger, where right. somebody would knock on your door and nervously ask your dad if you're home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, okay. So I get that we're, we're in a different space now. Yeah. Um, but interestingly enough, one of the things that you said, I have found in my own experience of dating, and I've really been kind of taken back because have I'm going to talk about both, the men and the women, but let's start with the men. Um, do you think that men have lost or forgotten the art of dating or courting a woman, as, especially something as simple as a flower? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, great question. Uh, yeah, they, they definitely have doing, done that because now we're kind of going into kind of a second generation of men who are now, you know, doing social media because social media has now been around for 10, 15 years now, if you can remember. Uh, mm -hmm. This is 2021. I remember I got on it two, in 2008 or nine and I was kind of late to the game, right? So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're, we're talking about now a whole new generation of men who have known nothing but social media. They don't know anything about, you know, going and, you know, picking up a woman and, you know, opening her car door and all this other stuff. They don't know anything about that. So yeah, the, the simplicities of, you know, dating and courting of bringing a woman flowers or, you know, I mean, you know, just, just anything of that nature, they've kind of moved away from that. And they said, you know what, mm -hmm. this is not only easier, but it's more economical on my, on my, on my wallet to go and just say, you know, hi, Diana, you're beautiful. And you're, you're regal and you're majestic. And then say, mm -hmm. hi, Teresa, you're regal and you're majestic and Keisha and Tammy and just go and just work our way down the line. So wow. I think what's happening with a lot of women is they are kind of, I don't know. I won't necessarily say that you have to change your expectations, but we are kind of operating in somewhat of an analog mindset when we think that a man is going to do all those things, or at least most men. You know, mm -hmm, I would mm -hmm. kind of equate it to how you look for a job. If you look for a job today, let's say whatever you do, you lose your job on Monday, right? Now, mm -hmm. the first thing you're going to do, you're going to, you know, pout around for a few days, like, oh my God, I can't believe they fired me, right? You know, mm -hmm, it's happened mm -hmm. to everybody, right? 
-hmm. But after a few days, you say, okay, so let me go and start this whole process of finding another position, right? And so right. the first thing you're going to do is you're going to kind of start going on, you know, um, Career Builder and Indeed and all the different LinkedIn, all the different platforms that we now use, right? Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. if you go back 20 years ago, those platforms didn't really exist. What did you do when you lost your job then? You went to the newspaper, right? But now right. you're not going to the newspaper to go and find a job. You're going yeah. to say, you know, times have moved along, right? So you say mm -hmm, to yourself, mm -hmm. I got to, you know, I can't have this analog mindset of thinking that just because this is the way I want it, that it's going to stay this way. And so I think with a lot of women in dating, they haven't really, they don't understand that men don't have to do that anymore. And so you find women getting frustrated because they're kind of waiting on a particular type of uh, a kind of a pedigree of man that's going to do all those things. I want him to do this and do that and, you know, write me a poem and all these other things. Right. 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 Uh, well, but, but what if that guy is not going to what if the majority of men are going to do that? Are you going to continue waiting to your 30s, 40s, 50s? Or are you going to say, you know what? I'm not going to answer every DM that comes my way. But I will look at the guy and say, OK, he seems to be, you know, fairly decent. I mean, I, I like what he's saying. His content's cool. Pictures are cool. I don't see any any, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I don't stalker. see any idea. <laughs> stalker I don't signs. See any <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, 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 and it's more and more importantly, I don't see any sort of thing where he has perhaps a girlfriend or a wife. You look through his right. profile. And think, you know what? I'm going to answer this gentleman back. You tell me I look beautiful. I'm going to say, well, thank you. How are you today? Right. For a lot of women, they slam on the brakes because of what? Ah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to, you know, allow some guy to court me through his inbox. Well, you know, then then so be it. I may, you know, I'm a, as you know, I just recently got married, and right. I met my current wife through through a DM. You know, I, wow. I saw. Well, yeah, I mean, exactly. So it it can happen. It definitely can mm -hmm. happen. So one of my best friends met her current husband they've been married about three years now uh through a dm so yeah it can happen so I, i'm so glad you're going into this direction because you're 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 definitely going in the direction of questions that i wanted to ask you as a dating coach because one thing that's very important for me blair is that again with this show that we're just not talking about the problem, but we're trying to figure out what is a solution. And in this segment, just trying to understand as adults, how can we date better? Right. So based upon what you're telling me, I understand the side, how the man views this in the social media uh, internet world when it comes to approaching a woman. Mm -hmm. And I understand the dynamics of how women are also viewing this. So my question to you is, um, do you think that we, that men and women's expectations or lack of understanding is what is causing a lot of us to miss each other like this when it comes to dating right now in our age group? Definitely, definitely is. Uh, I. I would say, you know, and, and, and I know the women are kind of going to, you know, frown at this, but I would say it's mostly on the women because for okay. the most part, men are saying, though, this is the way I'm going to be. And I'm not, you know, I'm not really going to change. Right. Uh, gone are the days where, you know, guys would just, you know, walk up to you on a, you know, on a, you know, on a street, not a street corner. That sounds terrible. What, gone are the days where a guy would just walk up to you somewhere randomly and just, you know, start talking. That 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 happens very seldom now. Um, a lot of that is because, like I said, men have the avenue and the options of really going online and just kind of meeting women. Number one, and then two, I think men are men over the years have kind of become somewhat skittish, rightfully so, somewhat skittish mm -hmm. on approaching women because they say to themselves, "Well, I approached you know five different women you know over the past month you know on, that I saw that I thought were really attractive." And they either all shut me down or when they shut me down there, it wasn't like a pleasant type of thing. She kind of tried to, you know, you know, make, you know, kind of clown me or whatever. So what men have done is they've taken the power back and said, you know what, I'm not going to put myself out there like that. And I don't, it doesn't have anything to do with his masculinity or his manhood. 
It's just really more of a preservation type of thing where men say, you know what, I'm going to throw my line out there. And if she doesn't answer, she doesn't answer. And that's what that's where the numbers game comes in, because they say to themselves, you know, the numbers state, if I'm a reasonably attractive guy, if I throw a hi, how are you doing? You know, would love to talk with you for a moment out there to eight or nine different women. There's going to be a couple of women at least that get back with me and say, hey, how are you today? Right. Right. So they, they'd rather go that avenue than to go the idea of embarrassing themselves, maybe in front of, you know, other friends or whatever, or do, doing it in a way that's that's more costly to them. Because it doesn't mm-hmm, cost mm-hmm. anything for me. Excuse me. It doesn't cost anything for me to simply throw a throw a message out to you in, in your inbox. Right. Right. It's mm-hmm. you know, it might be a, it might be a lazy way of doing it. That's one way of looking at it but it doesn't cost me anything. So I think for men, it's, it's kind of like that, that's the way they're doing, doing it right now. And it's really kind of here to stay. There's no way to really get around that. So, yeah. We are in a fragile real estate market and maybe you are wondering where you stand with your property. Well, guess what? The estate's home sales and rentals are experts in this type of market and they're ready to help you in the areas of residential, commercial, rentals, land sales, and acquisitions. Give them a call at 407-930-0626 or visit them at theestatesflorida.com. And don't forget to let them know Diana J sent you. Okay, so what you're basically saying then is that in order for us as men and women to start missing each other like this, We Mm -hmm. really have to start understanding what is really happening out here in the social media world and how it's changed from the days that we knew of. Because um, I was actually funny enough talking to a friend about this today, and he was saying to me something very similar to what you were saying. He said, you know, when women approach me, those are usually the ones that I kind of, you know, talk to because, you know, sometimes other women, I, I feel, uh, you know, and, and I guess maybe rejection or, 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 you know, don't want to have to deal with who wants to say you hear a no, you know, it's less, uh, it's more intimidating to do that. So if a woman approaches right. me, it's easier for me to be open up to, uh, open to that. Mm -hmm. And I was telling him in response to that, I definitely understand that. But, you know, a lot of us, especially black women in our community, if we had a daddy in the home or a male figure, they always told us, you don't chase men, they chase you. So here we are, you know, as adult women, and we're trying to do what our daddy taught us to do. (laughs) You don't chase men, men chase you. Yeah. And that's a very good question. And and I've heard a lot of women say that, that, you know, I'm not about, you know, I don't have no track shoes, Blair. I'm not about to chase no man. Right. I get it. I've heard that too. Right. What, what I will say is to that is it's, it's just a simple hello. Like I, I, I I told a young lady, I mentioned to a young lady, she was mentioning like, how even do I, would I go about saying something to a man that I was interested in? I said, Let's say you see a man at a bar, right? You know, you're at a happy hour and you're like, oh, he's handsome, right? Just go over, you know, simply, you know, hi, my name's, you know, um, just wanted to say hello to me. I mean, hello, hello to you. And uh, here's my card. If you ever want to, you know, get together and maybe meet for a drink, uh, give me a call. Boom. Now, if he's interested in you from there, you know, you know, he's going to say, hey, hey, sweetheart, don't, where are you going? Right. If he's interested or he might say, OK, thank you. Perhaps he might call uh you know the next day or the day after right but that doesn't really take anything from you you haven't chased a man all you simply do- did was given a given a gave a guy your car to let him you know know hey just give me a call right you haven't you haven't you you lost 20 seconds out of your day right you don't have to sit there unless unless he's interested you don't have to sit there and actually you know, try to think of these, you know, smooth lines to say to him or whatever, and not stumble over yourself. You just right. simply give him a card and that's that. Um, I, I tell women all the time, I, I think what's happened is women kind of see it as 
I'm not going to do any of that. If he doesn't yeah. show an interest in me, if he's not the one to step forward first, then I'm not interested. Okay. Then let me ask you, how's that working for you? Yeah. Right. If it's mm -hmm. not working for you, then you have to, you know, they say insanity is what? Right. So yeah. if it's not yeah. working for you, you have to say, well, let me try some other methods that may work. What I just said took 20 seconds. Hi, you know, my name's, you know, you know, so, so, and I'd like to maybe meet for drinks one day. Right. If he never calls you, you're like, ah, you know, maybe he wasn't interested. Right. But if he is, it could be the potential of something wonderful. And in this era, in the, in 2021, you have to get creative with a lot of different things. And that also might mean meeting somebody. You can't just yeah. stay on the porch and say, well, if nobody comes up to the porch to play with me, I'm not going to play, right? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you got to come off the porch yourself and, and, and get in the game. And that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying to our sisters. You know, I, I'm, like I said, this is really, um, this, this is really good <laughs> because uh, again, thinking about my own experiences and so on. And I think what you're saying is very true, Blair. And I want to say this, in order for us to grow, we always have to be open to change. Mm -hmm. And we, I think, uh, as men and women need to understand, like you just said, which really great points is that dating is different from what we knew. And mm -hmm. if you have any intentions of wanting right. to be with someone, you have to change with it. Other, you know, if you're just going to stay rigid in your way, you're going to be rigid right up to the nursing home by yourself. <laughs> as, yeah, as we age. So I think what I'm getting from you is like, listen, in this dating world, if you want to meet someone, you have to be more flexible and you have to be more open. Um, I also like the fact because it reminds me of... Um, you know, a meme that I had put on my uh, page, my uh, my pages, my social media pages a while back. Mm -hmm. And I always imagine and I always say, ladies, you know, don't be so quick to push a, a, a guy aside who may be complimenting you because we have to give them those safe spaces. Mm -hmm. But I think sometimes Blair and tell me if you agree or not. I think sometimes we really are like those little girls and boys on the playground. And I remember when I was on the playground, the little boys were always trying to find a way to yeah. approach you. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. even in these adult bodies, I think we have yeah. to understand that as single adults, we're still little boys and little girls trying to touch, trying to not touch, not touch. Yeah, <laughs> well, some are trying that. to touch, but, yeah. <laughs> but trying to talk to each other. And uh -huh. um, like you said, I, I think that, you know, we just don't understand that, uh, understand that that's really what it is. Do you agree? Do you think that we're still like the little girls and little boys trying to date each other? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, absolutely. Great, great point, though. Um, yeah, I think what happened is a lot of us, you know, I even spoke about this, actually, in my very first book. Um, mm -hmm. I talked about my grandfather and I said, my grandfather was a phenomenal man. Uh, mm -hmm. He was a airman. He was uh, he was a Navy man. He was a uh, deacon's assistant or a pastor's assistant, whatever you call it, a guy that sits up with the pastor. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. He was a professional bowler. Uh, he he was the person, you know, the guy in the neighborhood that had all the, you know, he had three Cadillacs or two Cadillacs and one Lincoln and had the big screen TV before anybody knew what it was, right? He, mm -hmm. he could fix anything, right? Charming, six foot five, Nat King Cole smooth, right? Wow. But what he also was, as, as I say, he was the player to end all players. And so there was a kind of another side of him that I didn't really realize until I had actually gotten older. And so my, 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 you know, my uh, grandmother, who's, you know, now deceased, we, you know, we talked about, um, excuse me, we talked about, you know, kind of how he was as a person and everything. And I said, yeah, there were, there were a lot of, you know, great things. Uh, there were a lot of great things about him, 
that, you know, you could look at and say, you know, he was that guy. Um, right, right. I, yeah, I think that, I, I think that what's, hap what's happened, uh, Diana, is, and, it, you know, we, we, we kind of, we kind of have, you have kind of moved away from the whole idea, you know, we, we want, and, and I'm, I'm, I have a number of thoughts that I'm kind of trying to put together. Sure, so I'm sure. Sorry, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, we have a, you know, we have a certain way that we kind of, you know, looked at dad, right. Especially for a lot of our women, we say, I want, you know, my dad taught me this and my dad did that and everything, but we're in a different era now. We're in a different time now. So the idea that your dad said, this is how, you know, this is how you should really do things. You, you may borrow from that and you may listen to that, but does he, you know, is, again, is it working for you? Right. Right. And so, right. and so what, what I always, what I always say is, you know, our, our parents, although they had a lot of great qualities they, they didn't, there were not a lot of things that they taught us. And so here's my point right. going, you know, going back to my grandfather. Um, he taught me how to get women, right? Mm -hmm. But he didn't teach me how to keep women mm. or a woman, so to speak, right? There were a lot of great things that he taught me how to, he taught me, you know, uh, work ethic and discipline. And, you know, there was no, there, we ain't sleeping in on Saturday. Get up and, you know, help me mow this lawn, right? That was him, right? He taught me a lot of great things, but he didn't teach me how to nurture and keep a woman. And so my, to your, to your, to your point, how do you actually get that? Where are you getting that from? Did yeah. your mother, she might've taught you be independent, be strong, uh, make sure you're handling your business, you know, make sure you do, but did she teach you the, the, the finer points and the nuances of how to keep and retain a man? Yeah. And so yeah. we didn't really learn these things. So we're really out here kind of learning by trial and error and we're messing up in these relationships and, you know, like what happened to him? I had to cuss him out, child. Or you ask what, you know, dude, what happened to a home girl, man? <laughs> right. And so we're, we're learning and we don't, we don't really learn these things until we're 35 and 40. And then we look at this trail of people that we've kind of left behind and we're right. like, man, I, I really did kind of give dude a, you know, a bad, or, a, you know, I might say, you know, I really treated her awful. So we're yeah. not learning some core things about dating and relationships. And we don't learn them until, like I said, we get to our, you know, mid thirties, maybe even forties before we're starting to say, before the light bulb comes on and we're like, oh, I get it now. It's not yeah. just about, you know, you know, how many women I can get and just kind of keep replacing them and keep, keep replacing them. And for women, it's, it's not just, I've got a great job and my son loves me. And that's it. There's got to be something where you have to learn how to nurture and keep those relationships, the quality relationships. Yeah. You have to nurture and keep those relationships. And most of us don't know how to do that. So, yeah, we we are kind of missing the mark each and every time with one another. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, gosh, I'm, so, just I'm sorry to tell you that. I'm sorry to have to go through that long story to kind of, you know, get to my point. But I thought it was I thought it was important. I didn't want to, you know. No, no. Yeah. I, I think everything that you're saying is extremely important because like I said, Blair, we, we have to figure out what is the problem because there's a lot of single women and a lot of single men out there. So why aren't we connecting? And we can always use the excuse there's no good men and there's no good women, but and we know that's not true. I know that's not true. I, I always say I meet great men every day. So mm -hmm. that's not what it is, but somehow even the great women and even the great men were doing like this. Right. So, okay. So you taught us two very important things here. Mm -hmm. I think as a woman, you taught us that, listen, it's a, you know, it's a different uh, age now. It's a different <laughs> dating space. So these DMs, what they call DMs, uh, messages that you get maybe on Facebook or whatever, these are really could be qualified potential people for you to look at. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't, uh, secondly, we shouldn't be so easy to dismiss them. 
Right. Um, which I think is very important because I do. I see, you see it, the jokes all the time on Facebook. And again, right. I know. I get it too, ladies. <laughs> you have that one person <laughs> or those two or three persons. And no matter what, you know, you're getting messages every day, every day, every day. Right. Um, and, but again, what you said was that what we should be doing, our part as women, our part mm -hmm. as women as, I think what you're saying is that the men are doing their part. They're reaching out to you. Now, mm -hmm. our part as women is to identify, maybe doing a little research, looking at their pages or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, maybe greeting them, seeing how they respond to you if, if we want to go further with this. Am I right? That is very true. That you said you said it you said it perfectly. Yes. Okay. So in saying that, um, what do you think, um, Blair? What are some of the signs that you can give? Because I always say I think women have more control of this dating space than we give ourselves credit to. I mean, either we're going to pull a man in, or we're going to cut him off. It's yeah. us. Yeah. It's not them. Yeah. Am I right? That's that's very true. Yes. Okay. So if we're the ones basically in control, which we, we are in control, then let us know in order for us to open up ourselves more to men, um, what are some of the things that we can look for as far as, and I think you did mention a few um, earlier as far as looking through their pages, but what kind of things do you think that we could look for when they're trying to reach out? What should the guys be saying that are not looking for? Because we all know, Blair, some of them just want some booty. <laughs> well, some of yeah. them just want booty. So yeah. how do we know? Well, I, and and, and let, I'll, I'll, answer, I'll say this before uh, we, we go any further. All of them want it. All of okay. them. Okay. <laughs> well, well, woman, if I'm interested in you, like, there's not a woman I've I haven't met where I'm interested and I didn't want that as the end result. So we all want gotcha. even, even the good guys want it. Even the guys, you know, praying and going to church and whatever, they still want it too, right? Gotcha, so gotcha. Very close. It's all. All of them want okay. that even, right? Okay. So I think now you're, you're asking what should women look for or what should men say? Well, let's start with what, what should women look for in understanding that this could be a we looked at the Facebook page. Yeah, we yeah like okay, it. okay, right. We like it. Okay. Now, what, because you're the dating coach, so I want to find out. So he said hi. You know, right. what type of, what kind of conversation should we be trying to encourage to see if this is, if he really is interested in pursuing us? Right, good question. Um, what I would probably say, number one, is not to really overthink it too much. Because it's it's like anything. If you start to overthink it too much, then you're going to get into this space where you say, well, you know, I, I saw a post where he misspelled a word. And I don't want no goofy, you know, dude that can't spell worth, <laughs> worth a damn word, right? So I, I would encourage women not to overthink it too much in the aspect of, you know, you know, don't don't be so critical where it's like, you know, well, his picture is kind of old or it's kind of fuzzy or whatever. You know, we can kind of talk ourselves out of a situation especially if it's if we start to kind of see things as like well last picture last profile picture he took was 2018 well men don't really like taking pictures that much right and they don't but, take it good anyway <laughs> right 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 exactly we'll sit there and just out the clear blue click yeah. and then upload the picture right we don't we ain't trying to pose or do none of that or whatever so no uh -huh. um, i would just i mean I, I don't really know if there's anything to really specifically look for other than you know, the obvious things, look and see if, you know, obviously if he has any children, um, mm -hmm. typically you're going to see some sign of, if he has a child, you're going to see some sign of it somewhere on his page. Um, mm -hmm. Look to see if he is either in a relationship or possibly fresh out of one. If you look and say, wait a minute, this woman, he's, you know, there and he's grabbing her rear end. And this is just in, you know, September, 2020, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know if I, you know, I Give him another, you know, you know, a few months before I I go deep into that or whatever. So right, right. those are the main things to look for. Just, you know, does he have children? Is he actually single? Maybe look at their mutual, maybe look at the mutual friends and say, 
you know, oh, he knows Keisha. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send a DM to Keisha. Like, hey, Keisha, this guy inbox me. Tell me what you know about him. Is he is he legit? Is he can you, you know, vouch for him or whatever? And then kind of Keisha, like, you know, like, man, stay away from him. Right. No, right, no, 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 right. no. Or she might say, you know, yeah, he's a good dude. I mean, yeah, if you if you even want me to, I'll I'll do kind of a quick introduction for the both of you, whatever. Um, those are the kind of things to look for. Obviously, okay. look for content that he has. Uh, if he has content talking about, you know, the 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 ho- the hoes in twenty twenty one ain't nothing, right? Yeah, you may yeah. want to steer clear of that type of guy, right? Okay. So any type of content where he's just sitting here just being blasphemous about black women, you know, steer clear of that. So those are the basic things I would say just to look out for. I mean, if you look at him and say, hmm, he's relatively handsome, then mm-hmm. just, you know, respond back. The one thing that's a beauty about social media, and I've always said this, is if he starts going, you know, saying, you know, hey, show, send me a pic, baby girl. And you're like, oh. Right. And you don't like right, that. Right, then right, you, can, right. you can quickly block him. Or if he says something off off color, you can quickly block him. That's the wonderful thing about social media. You don't have yeah. to deal with nobody you don't want to. Period. Yeah. The National Congress of Black Women's vision and mission is to build a network of women of color in leadership, sustainable entrepreneurship and civic engagement while increasing access to technology and building social enterprises that eliminate gender and racial bias. To identify and conduct leadership opportunities for members who are aspiring leaders. To encourage black women to engage in nonpartisan leadership activities within the educational, economic, social, and political arenas to take leadership in telling our stories that are powerful stories. To become a member of the National Congress of Black Women in a city near you, email us at ncbworlando at gmail.com. Okay, so you're you're giving some really good tips here, because like I said, I think a lot of these things, uh, again, we just haven't changed our way of thinking when mm-hmm. it comes to leaving ourselves open to that's really, yeah. uh, meeting someone. Yeah, yeah, that's so, that's really. I, I tell ahead, people all ahead. the time. I'll just, I'll just say this real quick. I, I tell women all the time, dating is not as hard as you think it is. It's yeah. The overthinking that makes it complicated, uh, which we do. You know, yeah, it's it's the oh, it, it it's not complicated at all. That's why, you know, for especially a lot for a lot of men, they they find it relatively easy because they're like, huh, she ain't, you know, and I'm just moving on to the next one, right? And one of the things, and I'll share this, and I don't know, I hope this isn't a point you're going to bring up later, but I'll share this. One of the things that I think is a is a critical point that a lot of women do. They'll meet a guy. Let's call him Mike, mm-hmm. right? They'll okay. meet Mike, mm-hmm. and, and let's well, let me in the middle of this. Let's say Mike and Daniel and Chris, right? Okay. And, and she and you you you're kind of talking with all three of them, right? But you just mm-hmm. met Mike, right? Mm-hmm. And you like Mike? Oh my God, he floats my boat. He's everything I want in a guy. You will immediately get rid of Daniel and Chris, right? And just focus on Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then. When Mike is not the person that you really thought he was, and you're like, he's a screw up. He's not about his business. Now you, you're you left with nothing, right? Right. Instead of, and which is what I tell women, you know, date all three of them. Don't, don't, be, don't be intimate with them. It takes right. a discipline. It takes a discipline. Don't be intimate yes. with them. But right. date all three of them. You know, get yeah. to know them and, you know, hey, I like, I like you. I, I got a couple of the guys that I kind of talk to as well. But be able to date all three of them. And the yeah. problem that I notice, especially with women, is they will hitch their wagon to Mike and forget about, I say, Daniel and Chris, right? And they'll forget yeah. all about Daniel and Chris. And then yeah. when you find out Mike doesn't work, all of a sudden it's like, well, I'm back to square one. And yeah. it's yeah. a lot of our women don't really know how to date. 
they don't understand dating as a it, it's not a game. I always say it's not a game, but it's a strategy. Yeah. And you have yeah. to understand the strategy of how to date and maintain dating with different men that you meet. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just had to throw that in. So I'm sorry. No, it was perfect because, and yes, I was going to talk to you about that because again, I think, and again, I'll just throw myself in there. Uh, of course, we, we always have the goal of meeting just that one person. But I think, and I always have to disclose, it's, it's so sad at our age, but I always have to disclose what I consider dating. Mm -hmm. I consider dating getting to know someone. Doesn't mean I'm going to kiss you. Doesn't mean I'm going to have sex with you. I'm not going to be physical with you. I'm getting to know you. So I could be getting to know uh, two, like you said, two or three guys at the same time. And my signal for focusing on one person is usually when that guy shows me or, or starts pursuing me in the way or the manner that I like to and shows some consistency. Then at that point, I may wean off the other two a little bit you know, to see what happens. But um, I think you're correct in saying sometimes in, in you know, because we don't understand the dating process, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes we do cut people off too quickly mm -hmm. because they say something or they do something one time or two times, right. but then over time, we're not looking for the consistency in someone. Would you say that? Absolutely, yeah. It's, you know, it's kind of a, it's one of the things, as I mentioned, that I, that I, that frustrates me when talking with, with my clients is they met, you know, they met, I met this guy and da, 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 and I'm, I'm, I'm done. He's, he's doing everything. And I, and I, and I say to them, you know, people mess up, people say yeah. things, do things that turn you off, especially for women. Yes. So yeah. if you understand yeah. that, you know, keep him, keep him there. And I always tell people, I'm like, and I tell women all the time, be in the mindset of always recruiting. If you are the quality woman that you claim to be, you should have on a on a rotation two to three men at all times. So if right. one guy messes up, you say, you know what? I had what I say, Mike, Daniel, Chris. I had Mike, Daniel, and Chris, and Mike messed up. You know what? I'm gonna give Jamal a call. I told you know he gave me his number four weeks yeah. ago. I didn't ever reached out to him. And if you know how to, you know, if you know how to finesse yourself, you can, you know, explain to Jamal why you hadn't reached out to him. Right. Right. So you and, and I think it's OK to be honest. Yeah. And say, you know, hey, I've just been busy, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Why don't we maybe go out sometime? Right. Mm -hmm. And now so you've kicked Mike out. And you've got Chris. Uh, what's say well, Chris, Daniel. I and, Jamal, the names. Right? Mm -hmm. and then if Chris messes up, you recruit another one. Right. Right. And and for most of our women, they don't understand the 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 way of the 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 process of dating. They don't yeah. understand. I keep it light. We go out and have fun. I'm not stuck up, but we go out mm -hmm. and have fun. No, I don't care how how much he leans into me at the end of the night. I don't care how nice he smells or how nice of a ride. I don't care about none of it. He's not getting none of this, right? So you right. gotta be. That's why I said you gotta be disciplined and keep it down. Yes keep it locked down because men you know we know all the right things to say right yeah we've, yeah. we've been doing this for decades so yeah. you got to be savvy enough to deal with a man who comes at you and may want that so but but in in essence you have to learn you have to learn how to date multiple guys and multiple times let them be aware that you have other people that you hang out with you don't have to right. go into any right. details you know because they're going to want they're like well, what, what what's dating I'm, yeah, you ain't got to know all that. You don't yeah. have to know that, right? <laughs> right because right. It, because when you say like, well, he took me out to, you know, what, excuse me, he took me out That's to okay. wherever place. Uh, he doesn't have to know that. He doesn't have to know anything, right? Yeah. So if it gets to the next level where you decide that you want to, you want to date only one person, then yes, you can share those things with him. But right now, y'all yeah. just kicking it. And yeah. Again, most of our women don't understand that concept. They don't understand that the idea of just 
dating multiple guys that they really like and who are quality and keep and kind of keeping their interest, but not allowing them to kind of get to the level of, you know, feeling all on them and having sex with them. It's an art. It right. definitely is an art. Yeah. And I, like I said, this is such good, good advice, Valera, because I agree with you. And I think that what happens in a lot of cases when, you know, you're, attra- you're physically, attra- especially if you're physically attracted to them, it's hard. It, it really is hard. Um, but like you said, it is a discipline and it's something that I think is important if you are really, if your intentions are looking for that long-term person in your life. Of course, that's kind of what we're talking about here. We're not talking about those that really just want to date and, you know, sleep around or just have a good time or no commitment. We're kind of talking in the circle of those that are really looking for that person to have a really deep relationship with that could possibly turn into marriage. So what you're saying is that, you know, we, you know, we're not a hoe <laughs> if we have three different people that we're right. talking to because right. what we're doing is we're trying to get to know them. We're not right. trying to sleep with them. We're not trying to kiss them. We're not trying to give them a feel. We're trying mm-hmm. to get to know if we really are compatible. And from right. that point, um, you know, if it progresses into a relationship, then we can talk about going to another level of intimacy if that is what you both want to do. Am I correct? Absolutely correct. And one of the, if I could give a tip uh, to the, to the women who are listening, uh, one mm-hmm. of the things that I would say, and this is something I actually have done with my close personal uh, female friends, get uh-huh. you a, and, and I don't want to call it necessarily a mentor, but get you mm-hmm. a really good, solid, savvy, smart guy who knows men and women both, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I have a personal friend, I won't name her name, uh, but mm-hmm. I have I have literally walked her through several relationships and I say, don't say that, don't, and I, and you know, when she says, he said this on a text, I'm like, no, 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 don't, don't, don't say that. Say this, say that, say this. And, and she's like, wow, how did you know that? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Once you understand the psychology of how men yeah. and women both work, yeah, it's like you're. It's almost like you're three steps ahead. And so one of the yeah. things that I think, unfortunately, that happens with women is they try to get men with food or with sex or something of that yeah. nature. And I say, and I and I did a um, I I was a special guest at a I I had a I um, I was a special guest at a book club. And one of the things mm-hmm. that I said to the ladies, I said, if if food and sex were off the table. How would you be able to attract yes. a man? Yeah, and yes. <laughs> you would you would have thought that I asked how to build a spaceship in the room because <laughs> the women they they just was like well, why why can't we do that? And I said because that's not important to all men. Yeah, and if you yes. if you if you stay on the surface, then you're no different than the other rest of the women that are out here. Yeah, how do you yeah. how do you entice? and entertain a man and not give him no whatever, right? And and say to yourself, you know, I mean, if you want to cook him, I'm not saying you can't do that. But right, how right, do you right, right. keep a man and not give him sex? And it's part of the problem that a lot of women have because that's what they were taught. They were taught, you know, if I give him sex, once he gets this good stuff, it's a wrap. Nobody, nobody, t- nobody is, is the same after hitting this, right? Well, Men, men nowadays, they, they've had sex with multiple women, right? And so this is where women falter because they give him the sex early and now he moves on to the next chick. And I tell women, you shoot yourself in the foot when you give this man your you know sex without any sort of real relationship or without the benefit yeah. of marriage. You shoot yourself in the foot and yeah. you've lost your bargaining power when you've done that. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Blair, I'm telling you, I, I had, I actually put a meme up uh, a few weeks ago about the same thing. You know, let's take money off the table. Let's take mm-hmm. pussy off the table. <laughs> and if you take those two things right. off the table, then what's left? All that's mm-hmm. left is for you to get to know each other. Right. And if you get to know each other and they're really, really interested in you, then money and vagina 
or pussy or whatever you want to call it won't be an issue. But I think a lot of times with money, uh, men are fearful that that's all they want them for. And women feel that all they want them for is their vagina. So if right. we take those off the table, then all we have left is to get to know each other. And again, it takes discipline, like you said, but that really is what it takes in order for us to date in this age. Right. And I like what you said that, you know, I think what happens in, in trying to understand this new dating space is that we do default back to what we uh, learned when we were younger. And as we all know now, when we look back at our mothers and our grandmothers, what did they do? Uh, it was cooking making sure you cooked for your man, you had the best meal for your man, and you knew they were having sex, so those were the two things. And then, you know, they would tell you the food is to a man's heart and, and, and you yeah. know, have sex and he'll never leave you and do what, you know, so you kind of grow up with that. But again, um, I love these points that you're bringing up because I think as adults, we have to, I call this mature dating. And... Yeah. If you're dating a mature person, I have found that after a while, you know, you realize that maybe you're not compatible. Doesn't mean that they're not a great guy. Doesn't yeah. mean that you're not a great person or a woman, but you guys just aren't compatible. So you can, you may con continue to be friends or acquaintances, but I think that's, you know, should be titled mature dating, which a lot of us aren't doing because of rejection, hurt, bitterness. And I think that kind of clouds our judgment also in the dating space. Do you agree? I definitely agree. And I, and I want to, if I may kind of, kind of uh, go back to a point that I made of, you know, when I was speaking about my grandfather, um, sure. I, there was one thing that I did want to just kind of bring out. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was telling you about kind of how he was and, that he was a great guy, but he also had this other side where he was a womanizer for all of all of intents, all intents and purposes, right? And mm -hmm. so I brought that up because he, whether by proxy or by you know design, taught me that as well. And so I had mm -hmm. to unlearn those behaviors. I had to kind of, you know, it's like a 12-step program. You have to first admit and acknowledge that, yeah, what I'm doing is a problem. Right. But I had to go back and unlearn a lot of the behaviors that I was taught to be by my grandfather, this wonderful, wow. great man. And so yeah. my point with that is, is that, ladies, if you have your mother who you might look at and revere and say she was great, she raised us and, you know, no money and worked several jobs and she was a hustler and da, 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 da. Right. But if you also kind of look at the other side of the fence and say, you know what, she was a great uh, provider and she was there and she was a, but there's also some things that she was, that there was a deficit in that I don't know about. You have to get honest with yourself and say, you know what? I don't have X, Y, Z. I don't have nurturing skills. I don't have, you know, skills that allow me to maintain a relationship. Yeah. Guys right. think I'm cute. Guys love my body. But after, as they say, the new car smell wears off, all of a sudden he's in the wind, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I implore women to be, to be honest with yourself and say, and, 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 and say, it's okay that you don't know those things. It really right. is. The challenge, the challenge is now that you realize that you don't know all those things, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to sit yeah. back and like, well, I'm always cute. I'm, I'm, I'm cute. I'm always get a guy to come, come through. Or do you say to yourself, there's some things I might need to unlearn about my behaviors my philosophies, et cetera. And that's yeah. where true transformation starts. Yeah, yeah. I, I always say, no matter what, it all begins and ends with us. Mm -hmm. We can blame other people. We can blame our parents. We can blame our grandparents. We can come up with a million excuses, but change and transformation begins and ends with us. And it really yeah. is our responsibility um, to grow in areas that we haven't grown in, in order to embrace uh, what we really want. Because a lot of times what we really want, and we have a right to want it, but we're not ready for it. Mm -hmm. And as you said, it does take um, some growth 
some honesty with ourselves, and um, you know, for that transformation to start happening. Mm. But um, as we start wrapping up, I, I do want you to also talk a little, you know, talk. I know a lot of it, you know, we were talking about the women. And the reason is because, like I said, I think the women do control the narrative when it comes to dating. So obviously we want to understand how, you know, uh, how do we embrace uh, these men and not reject them so quickly um, in order for us to kind of navigate through this dating space. But I also want you to uh, talk a little bit, you know, about what are the men doing wrong? Um, Mm -hmm. Blair, what is up with the dick pics? (laughs) Let's talk about that. Okay. What is it? (laughs) What is that? I can tell you. You have to ask ask those men on that that one. I have no idea. Um, what, what, what What I will say to that, I, you know, I do hear women say that, you know, he sent me a dick pic and everything. And I, and I say right, right. people, whether, and this is a man or woman thing, people tend, tend to kind of regurgitate back to whatever has worked for them, even when they're making a, even when they're trying to do something the right way. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the idea that a man and I'm, you know, my name's Devin, right. And I send you a dick mm-hmm. pic, right. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing that just because I'm doing it because there's someone that it worked on. There's someone uh, that said, wow, nice. Right. And so men say, huh, I sent that to, to, to Melanie and she, you know, we still inboxing one another. Right. So wow. men typically do what works for them, whether it's, you know, whether it's a kind of, you know, even, you know, back before COVID, of course, you know, yeah. going outside a club and just leaning on your car and you got a nice car. You know, women are like, oh, that's nice. That Benz is that Benz is hot, right? Yeah. And so, what works for them? And so, in sending that that kind of that kind of photo, it has worked on somebody, right? Mm. Because if if you send the picture and some woman immediately blocks you, right, and then you send it to the next woman and she immediately blocks you, and then you get blocked again and again and again, you're gonna say, hmm, this ain't working. <laughs> but if you send a, a, a penis pick to a woman and she blocks you. But then the very next woman says, not, I, look at that vein in that thing. Wow. <laughs> right? And she's sitting there gassing you up and everything. And, you know, she's sitting there, you know, t- doing the little, the, little, the little thing where you turn it from the side or whatever. Right. And she's sitting there like, okay, I see you, buddy. All right, now. <laughs> now, all of a sudden, he's like, okay, that worked. It got her laughing. Mm-hmm. It got her interest. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Mm-hmm. So, gentlemen, guys typically do whatever works for them, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever that might be. So that's what I will say. Gotcha. You know, and I have to laugh because I, I'm not going to say I'm. I am definitely not excluded. Are you, are you getting this, Donna? I, I, I am. That's what I was just going to tell you, Blair. I'm not excluded. Diana, and, Diana, are you? Are you, <laughs> you seem nervous. <laughs> And let me tell you, I think to myself, okay, first of all, you guys aren't good at taking pictures. So you thought you took this picture even better. (laughs) But again, you know, I find it, I I find it funny, um, you know, that they even go there. And again, the way my mind thinks, I'm thinking to myself, why would you think that this would be okay? Or why do you think that I would even want to speak to you after? But again, um, I still want you to touch a little bit on, as we get ready to wrap up, what do you think men are doing wrong in those messages that are turning us off besides the dick pic? What, what do you, what can you say to the men as, listen, if you want to get her attention and know that she, you know, let her know that you're really serious about her, this is how you approach her. I, I would probably say, it's a good question. I would probably say the main thing is be creative, as creative as you can without being corny, so to speak. Um, the I, I I mean, I would never tell a man to send a dick pic at all, ever, ever, right. ever, right. ever. Um, yeah. what, I, what I always tell men is if you have an interest in a woman, you know, don't necessarily go in her inbox and like, hey, Diana, you, oh my God, the way your hair cascades and, uh, you know, because you, if you're what you are, if you're an attractive woman, you hear that all the time. You're like, oh, right. thank you for getting me on yeah. my hair. Wow. Yeah. How yeah. Are you? 
But if you make a post, talking about you, if you make mm-hmm. a post and then I say something that's kind of clever, or I might say something that makes makes you say, hmm, never thought of it like that, right? Now right, I've got right. you. Now, then the next time you post, I do the same thing. I say something mm-hmm. to get you laughing, get you thinking, et cetera, et cetera. And so now I'm kind of standing out and from, from the, all the rest of the guys who are just in your inbox, you know, doing whatever, right? So now mm-hmm. you're like, he's either, he's really smart or he's got a great perspective on a lot of things or right. he's, he's a fool. He gives me the laughing, right? You've got mm-hmm. to do something that kind of separates yourself from all the other gentlemen that are in her inbox. So mm-hmm. for the men, I would just say, you know, no dick, no, no dick pics, no, you know, no, you know, <laughs> hey, good morning, you know, grand rising, beautiful, or any of the stuff that other that men say to kind of, you know, that you're just like, you know, oh my God, here we go. <laughs> yeah, none, none of that stuff, right? So, be original, uh, don't be too, you know, and what I would also say is don't be too worried, you know. Um, if you do happen to go in her inbox, don't be too wordy. Just, you know, keep it simple, you know, three, four lines or whatever. Don't give her this long paragraph she got to read. She doesn't want to do that. Just say something to, you know, make her think. Show show her that you are a little different than the rest. Don't compliment on her on her appearance. You know, obviously, as as a woman, you know, if he's in your inbox saying something like that, he's he's actually checking you out. So you don't have right. to tell her how is or your skin is this or you look great in that out eh, right lady, all that so, yeah yeah so i think what you're basically telling men is forget the surface it's okay to compliment but you know it's okay to you know compliment so you, i think you're beautiful but i think what you're basically saying is look into her profile and dig a little bit more about her and then maybe try and reach her mentally before you try and reach her physically. And then she'll think that you're not physically trying to get with her, but you may actually be interested in getting to know her. Am I right? That is absolutely right. Yes. Compliment her some, you know, maybe uh, on her dog or whatever and say, you know, I used to have, you know, she has a pug. Like I used to have a pug. They're, you know, they're this or whatever. I've heard that with pugs, you can do X, Y, Z, or they have this issue where if you feed them or put this on their coat, it really helps them out, right? You got to yeah. out. You got to make yeah. yourself, you know, it's, it's like anything, like a resume or a singer. You got to stand out. You got to make them say, wow, they, you know, I'm, 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 in, I'm, I'm intrigued. But if you just yeah. say, hey, Diana, you're beautiful. Can I take you out sometime? There's, you know, on a on a on a given week, there's ten guys to do that. Right. So you have, to make, you know, you have to make yourself stand out. And in addition to that, I mean, like I said, so that's what men do. I'll throw it back to the women though. You gotta, you know, kind of say, I mean, maybe he's not that person who's real clever and real charming and whatever. And but he's a really, you know, he's a handsome guy, and oh, he's got a great job, and you know, his profile says he's single. I got, you know, 85 mutual friends with him. Let me hit my girl up and see what this, what she says about him. She yeah. says he's cool. Okay. Let me inbox this. No, let me inbox this dude and see what he's, what he's talking about. So, mm-hmm. yeah. We are in a fragile real estate market and maybe you are wondering where you stand with your property. Well, guess what? The estate's home sales and rentals are experts in this type of market and they're ready to help you in the areas of residential, commercial, rentals, land sales, and acquisitions. Give them a call at 407-930-0626 or visit them at theestatesflorida.com. And don't forget to let them know, Diana J sent you. Yeah, and and I wanna just add to that, and, and from my own experience that I have found works very well is that you just said it is that, and and we talked about it a lot, is that we cut guys off too quickly. Because again, sometimes they're nervous. Sometimes, you know, they say the most goofiest or retarded thing. And it's not because, you know, and we get turned off too quickly. We have to be open, understanding again, this is the little boy in the playground. (laughs) And he's trying to bring you a rock. to get your attention. So I think it is very important for us as women not to shut them down uh, so quickly because I think that's one of the problem uh, with men a lot now. They just feel like no matter where they go, 
uh, they're just being shut down, shut down, shut down. So, um, wow. I mean, Blair, you have given, I, I definitely want to have you back on <laughs> because this has been some absolutely great dating tips that I think sad enough to say that we, like I said, in our age group, we need to understand, um, a little bit more the type of space now that we're dating. It's not like I said, like you said, you know, when we were younger, it, it's just not. So how do we adapt in order to meet that person for our lives? So I really do appreciate you coming on today, but uh, before we wrap up, Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I just had my pleasure. Thank you for having me on. I was, I've had a great time. Wonderful. I, I've had a great time with you too. And like I said, um, wow, you just really just hit the nail on so many things that really is happening. And you see through social media, how men are thinking and what women are thinking. I mean, you literally just touched on so many things and that's why I have to have you back. So, but, um, as we get ready to wrap up, can you please tell our audience a little bit about yourself, what you're doing? I know you are an author and actually correct me if I'm wrong, but you have a book that talk about a lot of what we talked about today. Am I right? That is correct. Yes. Um, again, thank you for having me on. I greatly appreciate it. Um, sure. yeah, I am an author. Well, I'm an, I'm a number of things. I'm an author. I am also a matchmaker and I am a dating coach. Uh, I got to be an author. My first, I actually have three books. I only have two of them uh, that are that are here now at this time uh, because the other one is uh, not here with me. But uh, those are my those are two of my books. Uh, but I, I my first book, the orange one here, came out in 2015, and then my other book, which is a black book, came out in 2016, and then this one was one that dropped. Uh, in uh, a couple years ago. So yeah, those are my th most three recent books. Then I have a fourth book uh, that will be dropping sometime here uh, in, in 20, 2021. Uh, it's called Throwing the Rose Colored Glasses Out the Window. And what it is, is kind of a homage back to my very first book where I went into a lot of details about how to properly date. Uh, we're in the COVID era right now where dating is ex extremely hard. Uh, dating is it, dating can be a challenge depending upon how you look at it as it is, but it's extremely hard right now because obviously we're, you know, the, the social distancing aspect and, you know, the travel aspect of it has made it, made it a challenge and a struggle for a lot of people. But um, the book is essentially one that is talking about how to properly date and the idea and, and notion that in sometimes you have to kind of go all the way back to the very beginning to get things right. We, a lot of times are, we, we date and then we kind of say, well, yeah, that didn't work. But sometimes you got to go back and learn the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. I look at it as kind of almost like basketball. You know, if you don't know how to properly pass, right? We got to go back to the fundamentals. If you don't know how to do a bounce pass or the difference between a chess pass or whatever, we got to go back and look at the fundamentals of why you're not passing right, right? Or if you don't know how to set a proper screen, I might be kind of going a little heavy for people who don't watch basketball. Right. If you don't know certain things about basketball, then we got to go back and teach you. And there's nothing wrong with that. And so what I do in this, this new book is go back to the very essence of how to properly date. I mean, from literally from the word hello. You know, if you see a guy on social media, what do you do? If a guy inboxes you, what do you do? If you meet a guy at a happy hour or at a, at a industry event. What do you do? How do you, uh, how do you approach him? How do you allow him to approach you? How do you, you know, what exactly do you do? And so right. I pretty much walk women step by step by step on how to understand dating and more importantly, how to understand men. And that's something that a lot of women, unfortunately, uh, didn't really grasp and didn't really get. And so what I'm doing is kind of going back and teaching them and helping them to unlearn some behaviors. So those are those. That's the book that's coming up. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm also a dating coach. I have uh, roughly right now about seven clients that I work with and I teach them. I won't say I teach them. I, I help them to understand kind of where they're going wrong in their strategies with either their relationships or in dating. Uh, okay. In addition, to matchmaker. I started that about two years ago and it's going well. I have a couple of clients I work with right now and um, that's it. That's me in a nutshell. 
Well, you are absolutely a busy man in this relationship space. You don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? I think it's needed. It, it obviously is needed. And that's why we have these conversations um, right. because we need to, there's too many, there's too many of us out there that is single. So we got to figure out what the problem is, what the solution is, and then change the narrative, um, you know, before our, our children start adapting the same <laughs> narrative that's not working. So I think that's really important. But again, I just want to tell you, uh, Blair, I do appreciate you coming on. You gave so much, uh, you know, knowledge and a wealth of wisdom that I think is definitely going to help our audience. And I'm definitely going to be calling you because I'm bringing you back <laughs> so we can continue talking about dating because there's just so many things that we could branch off to, you know, bar- branch off to. But not only that, that we haven't even touched on. So definitely want to bring you back in the future when you do have time, because I know you're busy. All right. Well, thank you very much. I'll be honored. I appreciate it. Thank you for your audience for having me as well. Wonderful. And to our audience, I want to say thank you again so much for joining me on Balance with Diana J. It was a pleasure having you here. And please, before this ends, remember to subscribe, 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 and follow me on my social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, message me. And again, remember, every Saturday at 9 p.m., we will be right here with another great guest, another great topic on life, spirit, and love. Take care. Bye.